It's bourbonblog.com live. I have joining me from Alaska, Heather Shade. She's the head distiller and co-founder of Port Chilkoot Distillery there in Alaska. How's it going, Heather? Good, good. Welcome to Alaska. Well, hey, I'm, I, have, I haven't actually been. I, I want to get there and see you all in person, but I'm happy to get there virtually tonight and enjoying some of your fine whiskeys. Uh, you, you're making a, an amazing bourbon, some rye. I got some absinthe in front of me. Uh, tell me, where for those people that have been to Alaska, whereabouts in Alaska are you and, and what do you do? All right. So, um, yeah, I know a lot of folks watching have probably been on Alaskan vacation, and yep. I, I bet we posted a few of you here in um, here in Haines. So we're in southeast Alaska, and Haines is at the very northern end of the, the Inside Passage. So if you've sailed um, to Alaska or been in a cruise ship or come up on a ferry boat, then likely you've docked in Haines or been really close to us. So, so Alaska's shaped. Oh, it comes on upside down backwards. I should have practiced it. Does. It's a little confusing. <laughs> so upside down backwards, Alaska. It's, right. it's a big state. Tr having trouble getting it right here. You got we're, it good? <laughs> we're down here in the corner. So this right. is the, this is the, um, the, the coastal area that kind of um, bleeds out from uh, uh, the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, um, and uh, we're kind of tucked away up here in well, and it feels like in the middle of nowhere right now because we don't have visitors. We don't have cruise ships right now. Nobody can visit us. So we're stranded out here in the Alaska wow. wilderness with just the bears and the beautiful scenery. Well, what we're trying to bring you a few virtual friends from all across uh, the world that are whiskey fans uh, tonight. So Dave and Irene, I see them joining and watching. If you're watching us on Twitter, on Facebook, or on YouTube, definitely ask us questions down below or retweet to us. And Certainly, we want Heather to feel like she's had quite a few guests tonight and visitors to Alaska. So retweet this, like this, share this. We'll try to um, bring you the bourbon love and 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 share uh, share share some of our stories with some of yours. But um, when did you get you guys started this? How long ago then? There in Hayes. This, Let's uh, see. We started operating about seven years ago. Uh, we started building the distillery eight years ago. Um, we actually found a, a a historical building that was really run down almost almost um, completely. Uh, but my husband, Sean, was a carpenter and he decided he wanted to fix up this historical building. So that took us about a year to do. Um, our location here at, at Port Chilkoot is, um, it was actually a dock right in front of a um, an army fort that was built at the turn of the century when the Klondike Gold Rush was happening here. Um, so it took us about a year to build the building and then we, I think we started up our whiskey still October 2013. So you've been at it for a while. Yeah, yeah, we we actually have. It, time flies. Well, I already went ahead and just uh, let's just go ahead and get right to, uh, and we want to continue to talk about it, but let's get right to the bourbon. I mean, I, I actually, I, I'll, I'll mention in a moment. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you now. I started with a Sazerac made from your uh, absinthe and your rye, but let's go ahead and taste the bourbon. The, uh, mm -hmm. the boat right bourbon. First of all, I, I got to say, you know, I, the, the whiskey is really good and we'll, and we'll kind of taste and nose it and all that. But your imagery is great. Uh, like the the um, the art, uh, the uh, the branding. This is really cool. It, it feels kind of like we have uh, landed in Alaska. Um, what are we looking at here? What's what's this inspired by? Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you feel that way, because that's what we were looking for. You know, uh, when we were looking at branding, we, we didn't hire out our branding or hire a consultant or anything. We just wanted right. to authentically represent this area. So, so the label you have there, the boat ride bourbon, that's a humpback whale. Um, yes. And uh, in the summer, uh, they migrate up here and that's a big draw uh, for both people coming to Alaska to see them, but also they're an important part of the ecosystem here and just an important part of um, kind of the ambiance when, when we're out uh, at the water side, we can see them coming up to feed and breaching and doing their show. So, so all of the labels are are a creature representative of this kind of unique Southeast Alaska um, environment. You know, a lot of people who think of Alaska think of bears and and moose and eagles and salmon, and and we have a ton of those. In fact, there was there were bears um, just walking around around outside the distillery a couple nights ago. And I thought I better shut the door while we're doing this. We wouldn't want to 
<laughs> incident during the interview. Um, but but we kind of we wanted to to reflect the the local fishing culture here and just the um, the general environment. So these labels were designed by a local woman here in Haines, Laura Rogers. She's a, she's a great artist and a beautiful cool. person. And um, originally from Scotland, she has an affinity for whiskey, of course. But um, she really kind of captured what we were looking for. So uh, most of what we've done with that is is completely local. That's that is amazing. And she's uh, Laura's done a great job with your um your branding, your lo your logos. And you said there's actually, I mean, of course, I, I'm not I'm not too far. I mean, there's maybe in Tennessee we'd see beers, but um, you actually have beer that come around the distillery. I mean, that's that's not an uncommon event then. It's not uncommon, and especially this time of year. Actually, it's it's um kind of uh, they're they're in town more than they normally would be this time of year. So so the whole community. Uh, if have any of you um, Haynes people are on here, probably have a story of the bears coming through their yards at this time of year. Um, you know, they they have cubs, they're walking around looking for food, and we just happen to live kind of in a pocket of just this immense wilderness, so they're bound to to come through. Yeah, so we yeah. see them all the time. I guess you know, some parts of Alaska, they're called grizzly bears. Here, they're called brown bears, uh, but they're huge, and they're beautiful to see. Uh, but yeah. we definitely want to keep them away from the whiskey. Away from that? You think they might try to go after it, or? Yeah, they like alcohol. Like if you were to leave a, a plastic bottle of alcohol outside, they would bite into it, and then we'd have some drunk bears on our hands. So no joke, they actually do like going. They actually they they are attracted to alcohol. You're serious? Yeah, I think they like the the sweetness of it, or they're just curious <laughs> about it. But yeah, they, they definitely have. Have they? So they've never gotten any around you then. No, no, we keep the place really well secure. That's interesting. I mean, of course, if you live in Alaska, you probably know keep the alcohol away from the bears. I didn't know that. So these bears <laughs> might actually these bears might actually try to come after uh, um, the um, the alcohol. Now, is there? I've been hearing in some areas of of, of the world uh, that because of um, tourists not being around and people not being out and about as much as they usually are uh, during COVID, that a lot of animals have come out of the woods, uh, you know, whether, whether animals crossing the Golden Gate Bridge and all that. Have you all seen some of that there too? You know, I've, I've heard reports of that too and seen some of those news stories. And, yeah. and when I saw those, I thought, well, they kind of just do that here all the time. So it's hard to tell if there's been any difference. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they're just safer without people around them. So, they can, okay, they can go about and do, do their own thing without us interfering probably. What what an amazing place to be. Well, let's let's taste the bourbon. I, I, for again, uh, great great imagery. It's the humpback whale on it. And um, what what are we tasting here? What's the uh, tell us about the whiskey? How you make it? How it's aged? Okay, so the bourbon whiskey. So this was one of the first things I wanted to to make here. I know it's a little unusual um, to combine bourbon and Alaska, but I just really love bourbon whiskey, and I wanted to to be special. So so what we chose to do here. Um, is we have a 70% corn mash bill. We use non-GMO organic corn from Washington State since we're really connected with the um, Pacific Northwest. And then we have 25% um, malted barley and 12% malted rye. And wow. for the first few years, we were just doing single batch or single barrel batches of, of um, our whiskey with that recipe. We, we mill the grain here, we cook it on site in open 250 gallon open fermentation tanks. It's double distilled and aged in um, number two char white American oak from uh, Kelvin Cooperage oh, nice. for three years. Very nice. The, the whiskey you're tasting right now, we just recently, like a month ago, um, made some friends from Kentucky and we've started blending ours with Kentucky whiskey as kind of a tribute to strengthening that heritage of um, Kentucky, but also bringing in some new flavors that we thought would really blend well with ours. So now we're doing uh, two barrel, we, we um, blend two barrels at a time. Uh, we're doing 25 gallon barrels and um, it's not chilled filtered. Yes. Um, and I would, I would call it a really strong, rich and robust bourbon, maybe yeah. a little um, different than people are used to taking, tasting kind of standard bourbons from Kentucky. Um, I They're, think we find that it pairs really well with um, cocktails. We kind of designed it to go well in an old fashioned. 
Yeah, no, and it, it, there's some beautiful, robust notes. And um, so th so you're using some Kentucky whiskey and then some of your own whiskey, bringing it together to kind of give you the best of both worlds. Um, with regard to, you know, what happens in the aging process in Alaska, where your, uh, your climate is, where you are, how does that affect um, distillation, aging, if at all? Mm -hmm. And the water too, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we, we weren't quite sure how to describe how it was affecting it at first, mm -hmm. other than, well, it was making it Alaskan, you know, using Alaskan water, making it Alaskan. Um, so I don't know if I could compare how it makes it different from other places, but what we do find it here is, so our, our water source is um, a lake high up here in the mountains above Haines. And we find that the the composition of the water doesn't need any treatment before we firm, before we use it for mashing and fermenting. Um, so we're able to kind of just maintain its its character throughout the whole process. And then um, you know, we weren't sure what the barrel aging would look like here. Our climate is really similar. It's more similar to Scotland than it is to the U.S. bourbon country. Um, super high barometric. Uh, extremes, really stormy, um, not a lot of changes in pressure and temperature uh, each day, but moreover, kind of um, long seasons. So we're finding that um, we're finding that it 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 picks up a lot of the oak characteristics, a lot of the barrel flavors, really really quickly. Um, we're trying to move to more of a, a five year maturation rate and and i think we'll know then kind of more about what the long-term effects of this this climate are on it so the the variation in temperature on climate is about what what's your variation on uh, as far as like the highs and lows you get on temperature well here we're pretty moderate because we're by the ocean so we're not like up in um interior alaska where it would get like 40 below in the winter and right. um you know, 90 degrees in the summer. Here, we we more stay around, like we'll get up to 70 degrees in the summer um, and it'll get down into the 20s or single digits in the winter nice. since we're moderated by the kind of the ocean. Right, being near the ocean, is that going to um, affect the flavor on the water, on the uh, conditions it's close to that, that sea air at all, even in, in the uh, warehouse? I think it does, but you know, I don't know if I'm just making it up, but I sure feel like I can taste kind of that briny, uh, salty taste in, in yeah. our barrels when I taste. Yeah, and and I think it does too. I was I was thinking I, I got a little bit of that um, that saline, just a tiny bit of that that sea air mm -hmm. on this, just a touch. Even even if somebody hadn't told me, this yeah, Alaska, I think I, I would have got too. it. It's a lot of visitors cool. come up and we have an we have an outdoor deck where they they're able to taste it and they're kind of overlooking the water um and and a lot of people have mentioned that they taste that and um no we haven't done any studies to see if maybe it's just because they were outside you know kind of inhaling it in but i always thought that maybe you know that's just kind of part of the overall process since our focus really is on this place and coming here and experiencing it and and hopefully a little of that is captured for people trying it elsewhere. The water source you're using, does that that affect it as well, maybe some or? Yeah, I think it definitely does. Okay. No, I think I think it's really, it's really beautiful. And I like the fact that you've taken a, this is a bourbon from Kentucky that is about the same age that you're putting it with them? Yep, it's, it's, it's a little younger than ours. It's very nice, it's very nice. And I'm already getting some questions here. We are, uh, Heather, um, where people can find uh, your bourbon and probably all your spirits. Where can they, um, where can they get these? Is, where is it distributed? And, and maybe where can they order it online if they can't find it? That's a great question. I'm glad people are interested because we get a lot of those requests <laughs> every day. And um, that's part of what I'm on here. Uh, right now you can only get it in Alaska. So Tom, you have like the only bottles probably <laughs> within a thousand mile radius. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta come find me. But here's the thing, though: if when you get really curious, pe people start requesting this. And if you're traveling to Alaska, or if you know someone who is, tell them to get you some. Right? You can find this in in uh, liquor stores across Alaska, and and of course at the distillery in Ains. 
Yeah, you can definitely find it in all the liquor stores and most mm -hmm. um, bars and restaurants. And also, if you're ever just flying through the Anchorage International Airport, which most people go through, there's a liquor store in there that sells just local products. And you can find all of them there and just take them on the plane with you to wherever you're going. Uh, but we are working right now um, on we're working with a couple of distributors on bringing um, our spirits to the West Coast, especially right. our. You know, our, the spirit we're most well known for that we're not tasting tonight is our gin. Let's let's see that gin. That gin is a this gin. This is our Fifty Fathoms gin. Wow. This is this is what we're really famous for in Alaska. It won a double gold at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, which we were really proud of. Con um, this past year, it did, or recently? Uh, it was three years ago. Re congratulations! That's wonderful. Thank That's you. So it's a regular award winner, and we, you know, a lot of people who don't like gin, uh, we've made converts of them, um, especially people who come into our tasting room and we're able to taste it with them and talk about it, and um, they just love it. So we get a lot of requests for this outside of Alaska. So hopefully soon, um, everyone will be able to order it online from wherever you are. What what makes the gin different? Then what are you um, what are you mm. doing to the gin to to make it to make it your own? Um, well, I, I worked up the recipe myself. It's a London dry style. So, so juniper is dominant, but it's really well balanced. So it doesn't come across like piney or harsh. And the secret is that um, we use tangerines um, that my family grows in California. And it gives it a really nice but subtle citrus finish that balances it really well. And it has just the nicest mouthfeel. Um, we put in a little bit of spruce tips too, which we harvest here locally. And uh, it just makes for just a really pleasant, nice sipping gin. Um, and people love it. We love it. That's, that's great. I see you already have some fans uh, in Alaska. Uh, Mark Rose is watching, says, love your gin. So we know that there's uh, people that are already fans <laughs> of the gin that are, that are tuning in. And you know what? There's a lot of, I mean, of course, there's a lot of gin fans, period. But I think there's a lot of whiskey fans that I meet, Heather, um, and people that just love a great uh, spirit that love a good gin. So well done on that. That's exciting. And you said your family makes this tangerine? Is that what you said? Yeah, my, my family lives in Southern California and uh, mm. my dad's family has always grown citrus. So he's got a green thumb and he's been just hand growing and harvesting these uh, tangerines for us to use in our gin. <laughs> it's so it's a little bit of, you know, staying in touch with my roots at home cool. um, and bringing it into my life here. Where, where in Southern California are they growing those? Uh, I grew up in the Mojave Desert, so they're in uh, 29 Palms. 29 Palms, very nice, very cool. We get out to uh, we get out to California usually at least every month or two. I do to uh, host whiskey tastings in LA and Palm Springs and San Francisco. So haven't been in several months because of all this, but I do get out there quite a bit. Uh, so that is exciting that you have all these flavors that are coming from. Um, so many places. You make a gin, a vodka. What else? What, I know we have several of them here. What, what else do you make? Yeah, we make the, the gin, vodka, um, and then we make the Boatwright bourbon, a Rackline rye, which is personally my favorite. I love making the rye whiskey. That rye grain is just so fun to work with. And then um, our green siren absinthe that we have there, that we um, you have there tonight too. And this one's really special because we're growing a lot of the ingredients for these locally, or our um, our community is. Uh, it comes from the local ingredients. Well, we'll move on here in a moment to the rye, but I just want to tell everybody that's just tuning in. Uh, we're, we're talking tonight with Heather from Port Chilkoot Distillery. She's the founder and the distiller there in Haines, Alaska. So these are the kind of interesting, unique uh, distilleries we like to take you to just about every night. We started doing this during the shutdown. We're continuing to do this to bring you a uh, great uh, distillers every night. Just make sure you bookmark bourbonblog.com live so you can watch this every night at 8 p.m. Eastern or just bookmark uh, the YouTube, the Twitter, the Facebook you're watching it on. And uh, we, we love that all these great people are joining us. Um, also, uh, if you have any questions after this, don't hesitate to drop me a line, Tom at bourbonblog.com. And uh, we'll definitely uh, talk whiskey. And I can even tell you more about some of the private whiskey tastings that, that I, since, since I can't get on the road and go to places like California or Alaska, I'm hosting a lot of private virtual tastings. I'd love to talk to um, you about that. Uh, if you're watching and you want a private virtual tasting, but we're doing a tasting tonight that everybody can watch. This is what we do um, 
almost every night. Uh, we take up a few nights here and there, Heather, and it's just great to taste. <laughs> We were doing every, we did like 70, 70 shows back to back when we first started this, not skipping a night when the shutdown started. And then we had to take a few nights off. That's so, a lot of tasting. A lot of, t yeah, you know, it really, it, yeah. You know, you hear about people having comfort food and being like, you know, but I was having, well, I would say whisk, comfort whiskey, but it still was <laughs> like, okay, I'm enjoying this. It's definitely relaxing. It's some good stuff and it's, it's helping us. It's, I think it's, it's made me feel like I'm, you know, going to the distilleries like I typically wouldn't. People are loving it. People are uh, having a good time tasting along with us. Um, yeah, it's amazing. We can use this technology right now to connect in this way. Because, yeah, we, you know, we usually we'd have a lot of visitors right now. And we kind of miss them. How are you using it there? How, how, I mean, when it comes to you know a smaller distillery like you all, you've been there in Alaska for a while. The shutdown happens. How are you connecting with, um, with your fans and, and, and potential customers? Well, that's, you know, that's been a challenge since we're so place-based and so, so tourism focused, you know, we kind of focused on connecting more with our, um, with our Alaskans, you know, our, our Alaskan fans that know us. And, um, we, 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 we released a, uh, uh, a special release of, uh, one of our whiskeys that I don't have up here that we, that we don't usually distribute around. Um, it's a, a, a whiskey that we triple distill and do in a, um, and a used barrel that previously had a bourbon barrel in it. It's called Old School Whiskey. Ooh. And uh, we've we've sent that out around Alaska to kind of give our fans here something a little special from the distillery that they can connect with. Um, but otherwise, you know, we've been just trying to connect more with people on social media, doing things like this. Um, right. But it's been a challenge. Yeah, we, it feels like we're far away. Yeah, no, it, and and so I get that, like, with, when you're, I mean, Alaska, a little bit more of a remote state than most, right? I mean, <laughs> so when we're talking about how do we actually get your whiskey or your spirits uh, mm -hmm. to new markets, what is that process like? I mean, it's it must be a little different for you than it would be a distiller, say, from, like, the center of the U.S., am I correct? Is the process a little different, how that works out? I think so. I mean, I think part of the challenge is us just not being there in person to be able to connect with um, sure. retailers and distributors who yeah. would then, you know, carry our products. Right. Uh, the, you know, the, the sh we have some special challenges here. We're up in the middle of nowhere, you know, shipping and, and right. lag times for getting stuff is challenging. But you know, to be honest, we're in actually in a good spot. There's a, there's a barge that goes to Seattle every week. And so it's really easy to get our products down there. But at a time like this, when we had been focused on, we had, we had just done a big expansion project. We have a new you know, 5,000 square foot building and we were just expanding our tasting room, getting ready to host a record number of, of tourists coming on site. So that's really what we were, we were focusing on. So, so when the COVID thing happened and nobody could travel, right. we had to suddenly you know, make a shift to connecting with distributors and retailers down south that right. we had planned to, um, to connect with and to go travel down there and introduce our products and start building our brand in those, in those outside markets, you know, slowly, um, carefully um, next year. And so, you know, we've had to shift our attention to, well, how can we, how can we get it out there now? You know, we have a, a strong uh, fan base of people who follow us who uh, have traveled here and who want to be able to get more product, more of our products. We get just emails every day about that. Um, and people who had planned to come here to Alaska this summer and maybe just want to still experience a little bit of it. You know, at least we can send a little bit of it in a bottle. Um, so the, the not being able to travel and, you know, the, the timing of it for us of wanting to make those connections down south and just now everything being by phone and uh, video conference. It, yeah, it's, it's a big shift for us yeah. up here since we're used to kind of pulling ourselves up from our bootstraps and just doing everything ourselves the old fashioned way. But we're embracing it and trying to shift, you know, shift with it. We, we haven't had to lay off any of our employees. We kept everybody busy. We kept making whiskey and we're just trying to have um, some optimism and, and, and faith and be smart that we'll just be able to continue and make it till next year for when everybody can come back, including you, I hope. Yes. I, I want to get up there and see you all, Heather. That would be wonderful. 
Uh, it's great whiskey, and, and what a cool story, how you all have grown this brand uh, in Alaska. And it's exciting that you're beginning to look at what other states you can go into. And um, and again, Haynes, you do have cruise ships that are close that, that actually some of the tourists come in that way. Is that, is that right? Yeah, we, we have a cruise ship dock a block away from our distillery. Wow. So they just pull right up come up and visit us. We're able to give them a tour and show them what we do. And, and that's the fun part because we can kind of do like we're doing here. You know, we can bring them in, we can show them the, the still and the, the fermenting mashes. We can talk about um, why we wanted to make a really Alaskan, you know, whiskey. And then we, they have a couple of cocktails and we roll them back down um, to the boat and they're happy. You know, it's just, it's like a, they're just really happy to be here and experience this. And I think a lot of people are surprised that they find um, they find this little whiskey distillery tucked into the last place they expected one. Right, right. No, I think that that's uh, such a such a great thing that you, that you have that there for the uh, the community has that for both the community for for Alaska and for the uh, the cruise ship visitors. I'm sure you're one of the the most popular destinations as they uh, as they get off the boat. <laughs> So I'm I'm already trying a little of the uh, this is the uh, rack line rye. Oh, and, yeah. um, oh, what, what, what type of what type of fish are we looking at here? So this is a rock fish. This is the, the kind of fish that um, you'll come up here and catch next summer when we go. Nice, fishing. excellent. Um, yeah, you can kind of on on rocky crags. You can uh, you can jig for them, or sometimes you'll you'll catch them when you're fishing for halibut. They're really cool fish. We have a, a giant. Uh, stuffed one in the distillery tasting room that a local fisherman um, caught. So, so again, uh, Southeast Alaska themed label. The rack line, if you don't know, is where kind of all the driftwood and seaweed kind of uh, right. pushes up against the shore when the tide goes out. But this rye is my favorite. It's um, a 70% rye, kind of just like our bourbon is 70% corn. And uh, like I said, I just I just love it. So you have seventy percent rye, and then what? What's the other breakdown? Oh, uh, let's see here. I have to remember the numbers. Oh, actually, it's sixty nine percent rye, eighteen percent corn, and thirteen percent barley. That's a great recipe, and the spice comes through really beautifully. There's some great sweetness on the back end of it. Um, what is the uh, what's the approximate age of uh, of this one? This one's just a little over three years old. A little over and three again, years. aged in new. Age What's that? You have some good age on them. They taste nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I think they're tasting pretty good for three they years. Are. Like they I taste, said, they you know, we always them. want it to be older. Yeah. Um, but I think it's showing a lot of promise, and and we're really enjoying it here. Beautiful. It tastes a lot older than than three three and a half or so. But three's. I mean, that's some some whiskey. Some distilleries are doing two ish or so, and this is. This is has a nice age, a nice flavor. It's robust. Um, mm -hmm. This is great. So you so you're doing a um, a bourbon and a rye, and are you are and you said the old school whiskey. Are there some other experiments you have going on as far as whiskeys go, or just maybe getting the whiskeys you have a little bit older, or what else is? Uh, what are your other experiments? Yeah, we're making more whiskey so so it can get a little older. Well, actually. I mean, I'll I'll turn this a little here. You can see our, our see barrels. A few barrels behind you. Wow, there's quite a few. There's a lot. We're we're still filling them. Very uh, nice. And um, we're not working on a new whiskey right now. We are making rye whiskey at this moment. It smells so good that um, the fermentations of this rye, like you can almost smell some of the flavors that you're going to get out of the barrel in it. Oh yeah. Um, but we are working on another barrel aged spirit. We're going to be um, working on a rum soon. It's in development. Oh. I know we make a lot of different kinds of spirits for a small distillery, but that's what inspires us and it gives everybody here in Alaska a little something of their own. That is nice. That that is what a variety for for a small distillery. That's that's mm -hmm. really cool that you're doing that. Um, so when it comes to Alaska distilling, how many? like craft distilleries are there in Alaska? Oh gosh, right now I think we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight, wow. Eight craft distilleries in Alaska. Yeah, when we start, or when we started eight years ago, there were there were two others, sorry, three others. And we were the first in this region of Alaska and Southeast and, and 
two others have started here and there are three up um, north in Fairbanks. So each region kind of has its own little representation of, of distilleries. And when it comes to, I mean, there's so many regions of, of the U.S. that and, and the states and the communities really support and towns, cities, they, they're really supportive of craft distilleries. I would bet that, that communities, uh, residents of Alaska are just extremely supportive of, of craft distilleries. Oh, they really are. Yeah, like ev everyone in our community is super supportive. I, I think you know, we kind of wanted to make something that everybody felt like it was their distillery. Um, and so when, when people from our community, which is really small, we only have about 2,000 people, but everyone seems to have a lot of connections and they travel a lot. Um, and so, yeah, we hear a lot from local folks that they, they travel with our spirits, they take them out there and represent them in the world. And um, yeah, Alaska is really, uh, just really supportive of its own. So there's a team here. Yeah, so, I, 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 yeah. I, 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 even though I've never been there, I feel that I, from what I gather, I could feel that would really be a, a great place to have a craft distillery and to have the community and the, the state get behind it. This rye is beautiful. This, you, I mean, you've done a, a killer job with um, your bourbon and your rye, both, uh, both very clean um, and really just unique, unique for the whiskey category. And I'm sure it goes back to um, who's making it, where you're making it. Um, mm -hmm. Grains, where do you, you get your grains from, from where mainly for the rye? So our, corn, our corn from Washington, it's um, non-GMO organic, non organic corn that we source through a, um, a feed company. And we have a close relationship with them. We've been working with them since the beginning. Um, and then our, our rye is actually from Canada and our, our malted barley is from um, other parts of the U.S. Cool. So majority of it is there from that general region close to you. You're really mm -hmm. allowing that region to speak on what you're doing. That's great. That's really. I like cool. to think so. Yeah, and I, I know they're, um, yeah, they're a little different from what people think of as as bourbon or rye whiskeys that they may have drank before, but I, I think they should be because they're from here. The, the, and the history of distillation in Alaska. I mean, even, maybe even pre um, pre prohibition, where there were there. A number of distilleries. What was typically distilled, or what was Alaska known for as spirits go historically? Man, you know, I've I've tried to do some research. I I looked up um, when I was researching this this building where we were located in. You know, it was an army fort at the um, built in 1902, and I wanted to find some stories about here, but they were all about bootlegging because um, it was built during Prohibition. So I found out that the um, the Fort Laundromat is where you could get some uh, illegal hooch hidden in your laundry when you received it back after turning it in. But I mean, this is the this is the land of of the gold rush. You know, people were just shipping up barrels on the ships from San Francisco, right. whatever they could get, and then it was just a bunch of <laughs> moonshine stills up in the up in the Yukon in some canvas you know, wall tents in the middle of winter. So th there isn't a lot of, like no one's put together much of the history about it. But, um, you know, having gotten to know Alaska over the past 20 years, I would say it was, it probably just did whatever they wanted. <laughs> and I bet there were uh, just a bunch of stills in the woods, um, but not much formal, you that, know. That's, that's really unique. Well, you're definitely adding to the history here with the bourbon and the rye. You're doing a great job. And, uh, Donald's our friend Donald Snyder is saying their their gin is fantastic. Their tasting room <laughs> is the hottest happy hour in Haines. So uh, Donald's been here. He knows. Donald knows. Thank you for watching. Donald's great. Hi, Donald. Her. Donald's very helpful to many craft distilleries, and we appreciate all that Donald does for the business. And uh, oh, Donald, Donald's just a treasure. He really he is. Knowledge for our industry and super helpful to all of us. He really is. So many great people watching. We're glad you're watching. Again, uh, we're talking with Heather from Port Chilkoot Distillery there in Alaska. We've taken, you know, we go everywhere from, sometimes we do, we've done some Scottish distilleries. We've done New York last week. Tonight, we're doing Alaska. We do this just about every night on the Bourbon Blog Live. So wherever you are watching, make sure you, you like this, you share this. Uh, we're going to keep on featuring a lot of great distilleries and bookmark uh, bourbonblog.com forward slash live. We're going to put your website address up too, so people can uh, check it out here in just a moment. But we'll transition. I want to grab this one too. Uh, well, I want to say first, I'm my wife Annabelle. She made a um, sazerac from the rye, 
Mm. From the absinthe, and it's beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful Sazerac. I said, you know, what should we do? I said, we should make a Sazerac with this uh, mm -hmm. great rye. And I love, I love this green. It's, this is the green siren absinthe. Look at that. There's the mermaid. Isn't she beautiful? The green siren. Do you see this mermaid swimming sometimes? Is this a mermaid you see in your hands? No one's ever seen it, but she's got to be there. Has to be. Are there, are, there a, are there any stories about mermaid sightings there, or is it? Uh, there are not. We've started the legend, but there are many stories of shipwrecks and oh. um, selkies, uh, uh, seals that turn into humans. So I think she just fits right in. Absolutely. So this absinthe is this is a, a gorgeous absinthe, and I tried a little by itself. Of course, I did a little with the. Um, uh, the water luge too, but I don't, you know, when it comes to absinthe, you know, I like it just by itself sometimes. I like it with the water, but just tasting it just right there at the, uh, this is 110 proof. This is beautiful. Tell me, tell me about the absinthe. What are you, um, this, is this one of the first absinths in, in Alaska or is it, uh, the first and only absinthe in Alaska. First and as far only. as I know. Um, I, I really, know. this is really special to me because yeah, I like, um, you know, it's, it's bottled at 110 proof, so it's really yep. strong. It's meant to be diluted with a little cold water, yeah, and it, and it probably, does loose a little. Um, yeah. But people come in and you know want us to add sugar cubes or or sugar, you know, before they try it. And I really encourage people to try this on its own because the the herbs and the plants that we use in the process, um, I think, give it already a nice sweetness and mouth body. We don't add anything else to it, um, so it has no sweetener in it. I have to taste it before I talk about it. Yes, let's try some absinthe. Mm. Yeah, so it has the classic, you know, trifecta of aniseed, fen um, aniseed, fennel, and wormwood. The, the wormwood, of course, Artemisia absinthe. We found it grows really well here in Haines. Like Southeast oh, wow. Alaska is kind of the gardening center of Alaska. This is stuff that we just got last week from a, a local farmer. It just grows so well here. Um, wow. So you, that's actually, you have that grown locally for you then? Mm-hmm. We have this nice. grown locally. We also use a, a hyssop and a lemon balm. So so mm. we distill it first with all the, um, the anise, fennel, and wormwood just right in the still, like in the pot. Um, we infuse it heavily with that and distill. Um, we start with neutral spirits for it and distill it that way. And then we put in herbs for a secondary maceration after the fact. Um, just to give a little natural color. So we don't add any additional color either. And it really kind of brings out the flavors of the herbs that were in the still. And I think it gives it a nice body. It's it's really something else. And this, again, there are craft distilleries that mm -hmm. will venture to make absinthe, but not a ton of them. And you all have the right ingredients. And you, you is that part of what inspired you to do an absinthe was the ingredients and you just liked it? Is that kind of what inspired you? It was mostly because we were looking for ways to incorporate more local ingredient, locally grown ingredients, because we just really are looking for ways to bring in more of the community and in, into this effort. Um, but also, I just I've always been intrigued by the mystery of absinthe and and just it's mm, like just it's it's nature and that you don't see many of them. I think I think if I recall when I told our distributor we were going to make an absinthe, they were like, okay. <laughs> we'll sell a little bit. <laughs> but we didn't care. We wanted to make it anyway. So no, I, I I love that you've done that, of course. Um classic Sazerac. Do you have any favorite cocktails? I, I like absinthe frappes. Do you have any that you love to do in the uh the mm. distillery or with any of your other spirits with the absinthe or any favorite? Yeah, we products? made one up that people really love here. We call it that absinthe minded. I'm sorry if that's already a cocktail that we didn't know about. We're in Alaska, and that's just our excuse for everything. Um, but it's with uh, absinthe and absinthe gin and orange bitters. Oh, nice! Um, shaken on ice and, and strained, and it's really nice. That does sound really good. It's wow. good. The, they have absinthe and the gin actually blend really well together. What's what are your? Do you know what your proportions are? Or um... I've forgotten. If you don't, we can it's we can. Been years away. since I've been behind the bar and the tasting. Don't worry room. about. It. I, I was going to say I may try one later here. I'm just. So I kidding. know. Well, I'll post the recipe if there's. Post a it and we'll share it. That's that's a great plan. Everybody well, can try one. This is great. This is um, 
this is a great accent you've done uh splendid with all of your products and again it's port chilkoot this is the green siren right at 110 proof uh alaska's it's the only right the only absinthe in alaska actually you can say that about each of these three spirits we have the yeah. only rye bourbon and absinthe in alaska wow. so when you think about so and that's the thing, you know, I, had, I hadn't heard of Alaska bourbon or rye. I was like, this is, there's some real charm and and um, and mystique, I think, when you think about um, spirits from, from Alaska. I mean, I'm sure that's something that that does, that, that helps the story and that people get excited about, right? Yeah, and I think the popular thing um, for Alaska is vodka because, it, you know, it has that image of, you know, cold and pure and, and glacial, which is, is a, what we have in Alaska. Um, but we kind of just wanted to break out of that mold a little. We're a little different down here. And um, yeah, we just want to be a little creative. Oh, yeah. And and, and you've definitely done that. When um, I don't even know if you know this as far as tourism, as far as when it comes back to, to your area. Um, has anybody said as far as when cruise ships and all that? Will, and you just, Unfortunately, they, they've canceled the entire season, so we won't see them back until next year. Alaska decided to open up a little bit, so I think you have to be tested before you come or at the airport when you arrive. Um, so some independent travelers are starting to come back um, and maybe go out on wilderness adventures, you know, where you're not in contact with many people. Uh, but it's going to be a real challenge for Alaska. You know, recovery here doesn't look like um you know all of us being able to open in october this is our season right now right when we're used to having customers and people and then we kind of hunker down through the winter and just make whiskey right. um so the, the whole state is going to have some interesting challenges ahead that's right because um, i mean describe that a little bit because in in the winter there are Describe how that looks. COVID, you know, what the shutdown looks like for you all versus maybe what I would know in the Midwest. Winter here, as far as what it feels like, is like like when COVID hit for everybody else. That's what we go through every winter. <laughs> um, I, besides it being really dark and rainy and stormy, right. life completely moves indoors, moves into the distillery where we're doing a lot of our whiskey making. Um, visitors come here at um at their own peril <laughs> a lot of times during the winter here you can't travel in and out it's too stormy for boats to come and and planes can't fly so it's it's really isolated and and dark and like i said life kind of moves inwards more into having um you know going over to people's houses and going into people's home and and just kind of being isolated so this time of year is usually when everybody comes out and it's more of a it's just more extreme um, than, than down south, but it's really similar to being in quarantine. So you already, in some ways, of course, on a different level, you all knew what it felt like, but for you all, this was so important to have this time of year for tourism, for, for business, but now you're, you're not having it and that's not so good. Exactly. So, I mean, it's nice that we have you know, the whole outdoors to ourselves without having to share it with anybody. And, right. uh, but from a business standpoint or from being able to share the products or the goods or the art um, that is so prevalent here, it, it's just, um, we just have to all wait until this time next year. Excellent. Well, I hope that, um, hope that gets back up and going for you as, as soon as it can uh, safely on, on all levels there in Alaska and, uh, We'll definitely continue to spread the good word of the Port Chilkoot uh, Distillery. Uh, Donald Snyder sharing a memory there. We we made an actual boat delivery to a bar in the Skagway. It was so awesome. So oh yeah, through. so Skagway is a is a town um, across the canal, um, several miles north, and and uh, we needed to deliver a case of gin to the. Um, to the Red Onion Bar and Saloon there in Skagway, which is an uh, amazing place. And everybody who goes to Skagway should should go. And so we took our, our boat skiff and launched it here from town and just drove it over, <laughs> past all the giant cruise ships. That was fun. That's cool, Donald. Thanks for sharing. And Donald, if you have a if you have a photo, 
post it down below on Facebook. That way everybody can see it if, if they're if you're able to post that. Oh, yeah, we'll there. have to dig up that photo. I think it's a Sean. Post it, but Donald was always great about sharing photos and he's so supportive. So uh, no, this is great. Your your whiskey is um your whiskey is very nice and I, I do recommend it if you're in Alaska or if you are um you know whenever you're able to get your hands on some look for the boat right bourbon and the um the rack line rye with that rock fish there and um I can only imagine that Alaskan fish and this Alaskan bourbon and rye are great pairing, right? Do you have, do you have oh, a favorite there's fish? There's such a good food pairing. Yeah. yeah. All the fish just goes really well. Um, yeah. Like, actually, that, that rockfish does go well with the rye, so you don't have to worry about remembering that. Just look at the label. <laughs> um, but, yeah, wild game here, all the, all the fish and seafood. Um, no. We, I have lots of recommendations for pairing. We'll get more on our website, so... Yeah. That you can have your own little Alaskan experience out there. And if you could find a green siren to drink with, you know, you can always drink some absinthe. With. That might be my wife here in a little while. I'll find a green siren to have another Sazerac. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, we, hey, you, you've been wonderful. This is so great to uh, uh, virtually meet you, Heather. Uh, congratulations to you and your husband on um, everything you're doing there and everything you've done for the distilling uh, world there in Alaska and, and doing something so special for Alaska. Um, well done the last seven years and keep up the great work. And I hope that uh, everything will get better there for you on all levels in Alaska soon. Thanks, Tom. I really appreciate um, getting to spend this time with you. And yeah, you definitely have to come for a visit. Everybody does. I highly recommend it when it's safe to travel again. Absolutely. We'll look forward to seeing you hopefully in the new near future heather and uh oh tell me uh tell me your website the port chilcoot is it just the port chilcoot distillery port chilcoot distillery.com all right i am going to uh to put that right up here so everyone can see the port chilcoot and then from there people can find your uh your instagram and everything like that you have some great photos with alaska in the backdrop so follow them on instagram and facebook there's just some super cool pictures. As you can see, this great whiskey in the backdrop of um, of Alaska. And I know a lot of Alaskans are going to watch this show after they get off work because it's still early in the day here, and we still have another 12 hours of daylight. So everybody <laughs> will be outside, and then they'll watch it. Then they'll then they'll watch it. What now? What time is it actually there right now? It's almost five. All right, so you're like three hours uh, behind us. So that's. Um, like 450 there, that's cool. Yeah, if you if you you are watching this kind of midstream, or if you do watch this later, uh, you can always start over. It's up permanently on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and we'll also be putting the audio on our podcast channel. Make sure you follow us, and uh, we'll bring you many more great craft distilleries uh, every night. Cheers, Heather. Thanks so much. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, Tom. And thanks for everybody for watching. <laughs>